Delay Cree creates. Most people start running to lose body fat, right? All their running friends are skinny, so losing body fat is what happens, right? Science has been saying for a while now that you can't outrun a bad diet, and I mostly agree. It's like jumping off a cliff and building a plane on the way down. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's pretty hard to do. Most people can't actually do it. But what if I were to tell you that there's actually a way that you can maintain and or lose body fat so you feel light, spry, loose, free? What? Well, I think I might have actually found that way. Okay! Listen on to find out how you can lose and maintain your body fat and more on this episode of D-Lake Deliberates. <laughs> Welcome to D-Lake Deliberates, where we do deep dive stories on uniquely fun topics and ideas, and we show smart runners and endurance athletes, that's hopefully you, how to get 1% better every day so that you can perform amazingly throughout your life. I'm Darren D-Lake, a sub three hour marathoner and 10 hour Ironman finisher, and I've been in this endurance sport and distance running game for over 25 years. So I have a few things I'd love to share with you on my journey. Oh, and before we get into it, you know the drill. Please make sure you like, subscribe, or do whatever you need to do. Follow, etc. Whatever platform that you use, whether that's a podcast if you're listening, or whether that's YouTube if you're watching, or wherever you might be watching or consuming this. And let's just go on a quick walk so I can show you what you'll learn. Okay, first disclaimer, I am not a dietitian, nor do I play one on the internet. Go somewhere to a professional that will understand your personal needs and your history. Most things I'm talking about here are anecdotal, and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It's just take this all with a grain of pink Himalayan rock salt. I use the discovery approach, which there'll be a link in the show notes or somewhere down below in the description, which is a combination of my own science-backed research, talking to experts and actually performing and experimenting on myself and getting the experience. I'll be talking about my running too much problem and eating problem and then giving you my running and eating solution. Hopefully this leads you to the right balance for your own perfect balance between running, eating just enough so that you can get the right amount of fitness and health on your running journey. Oh, and a quick definition. I say fat loss and not weight loss because you can gain and lose weight and that's healthy. Please remember that. What you don't want to do is gain unhealthy fat. As a runner, your goal is to keep unhealthy fat off of you. There is an amount of fat that is healthy, but I'm talking about the unhealthy fat. For me, it's keeping my body fat percentage around the 10 to 12% mark. And that changes for everyone else, but that's, that's for me. And it will probably get higher as I get older. And any lower, it's also unhealthy. Oh, and last thing, I'll be helped out on the science-y stuff by certified dietitian and exercise sports scientist, Jordan Kane, and exercise sports scientist and my co-host of this sometimes video podcast, Mike Trees. Let's get into it. Part one, what does running a lot look like? The problem. Not to use myself as an example, but I'm going to use myself as an example. Sorry, not sorry. So I've read all the magazines and listened to the pros and coaches. And they all say, if you want to run a fast 5K, you need to run 100 to 115 kilometers a week for you metrically sensitive people at 60 to 70 miles. And then I said to myself, well, hold up. I'm already doing 60 to 80 kilometers a week, which is uh, 40 to 50 miles. What's another 30 to 40 kilometers slash 20 to 15 to 25 miles going to do? So I ran a bunch more and this was about two years ago. And with running a bunch more meant eating a lot more. And I eat to hunger because you got to fuel yourself. And when you're hungry, you're hungry. And then I got fat and I didn't like it, but I got faster. But, but, but calories in and calories out, you might say, right? I mean, it's just simple science when it comes to that. Here's Jordan again on the importance of calorie deficit and carb cutting. When we're talking about fat loss, we don't need to cut carbs. Like it's a thing, like you can, but we need to cut calories. And I'm not saying calorie counts either. Like I'm saying like what we need to do is get you into calorie deficit. And it doesn't really matter what you eat. I would say yes, in terms of whole foods, like slow carb diet, plus those whole grains and plus fruit and stuff is what I would recommend ideally. Keep the carbs in there, drop in the calories, drop the portions, drop the portions, drop like maybe one little meal in the day or one snack or whatever it is. As long as you're feeling fueled and as long as you're feeling like you are never starving and your training's going well and you're not like bonking at the end of training like in the day, that is an ideal situation for fat loss and to maintain the performance. 
I was torn because I was like, yo, I'm getting faster. But I also knew that this getting fit thing and getting faster wasn't healthy in the long term. I'm a big believer in the long term. So I did something about it and I figured out the right training and eating balance to maintain healthy body fat while running as fast as possible and playing to my strengths. You are naturally built for those shorter distances of speed work. You know that mentally and you know that you would be pushing yourself and not really enjoying the whole experience of training for those longer distances. So I feel like that in itself would be a barrier for you. That's like a hard slog and you would need to be very motivated all the time to be keeping up with that if it's not coming naturally to you. Part two, what does eating a lot look like? The problem... So I started the slow carb diet um, a while back, about four or five years ago. It was the best diet. I tried keto. I tried intermittent fasting. And slow carb was the best, which uh, I'll have links below and in the show notes for you, description. And it ended up helping me lose a whole bunch of body fat. And then I also lost some muscle with it, uh, which happens with runners. Uh, So then I found out how to gain muscle on top of actually after losing it. And I really liked where I were. It worked great. And it started working not so great when I started running a lot, which was two years ago. Um, I didn't feel good. I felt like absolute shit. And I never really felt like I had any energy or zest. Uh, I didn't feel spry, as I said earlier. So I went in for a DEXA scan. And that's when I met Jordan, who did my DEXA scan. And she's now my personal dietitian. And she told me I was under eating. And she was like, yo, you not in these words. She was like, yo, you need to eat more simple carbs and you just need to eat more calories and stop eating the slow carb diet, the nuts, the protein, the the eggs, and all that is great. It's healthy, but what you're doing with the running, you need to eat a different way to be healthy and to fuel you. I misinterpreted what Jordan said (laughs) and I was like, cool, I'm going to eat whatever I want. And uh, I ended up eating too much, was eating a lot of carbs Quick side note, I don't like eating carbs. Personally, I am sugar sensitive and I have um, sugar sensitive issues with things that are high glycemic um, on the high glycemic index chart. So this makes me feel jittery and kind of bloated and I just don't feel good. I'd rather either eat, you know, again, the slow carb diet or just intermittent fast personally. But I knew that I needed to run a lot. So again, I was torn. I gained muscle mass, which was good after, you know, eating this way, which was eat whatever I want because I was extremely hungry all the time but also ended up gaining weight and also ended up gaining fat over the course of the next, let's just say two years to make this simple. I just gave myself permission to eat whatever I wanted when I was running a lot and I was running hard. I combined the slow carb diet, (laughs) which is a lot of fats and proteins with the, the high carb diet together. Doing both of those things is the worst thing. Absolutely no bueno. High carb, high fat, not good at all. Our resident dietitian, Jordan, explaining what exactly fat burning is. The idea of burning fat is basically coming down to a calorie deficit. No matter how you get into that calorie deficit and how you can sustain that calorie deficit over a period of four to six weeks or more, that's really where the the crunch is. Like you can do this diet, you can do keto, you can do high carb, low fat. Like it doesn't really matter unless, like, there's a huge study that that show all these different kinds of diets with like controlled calories and they show that if you're in a calorie deficit like you're going to lose fat so like this fat burning kind of idea isn't really a thing like we will get into the fat stores when we are lower in in calories than our body needs because it's going to start like pulling at them um if we go too low that's when we can that's when we can can get a bit dangerous and we start pulling at muscles and stuff like that as well but i think we're confusing fat burning with being in a calorie deficit. Even if you're using like all these supplements and trying to get into fat burning mode, you're still eating the amount of calories that your body is like at maintenance. You're not going to lose fat. You're going to burn fat. Part three, here's what I did to solve the running too much problem. I went back and looked at what worked over the previous years. I looked at my Strava history. I looked at my journaling, looked at my comments. What was I running? How far was I running? How long? What did I like doing running as far as, you know, what workouts did I like doing? Uh, what times was I doing? You know, like how how well was I performing in these workouts? What strength training was I doing? What times was I actually doing the strength training? I found out that I liked strength training after doing hard sessions. So I only did two strength training sessions in that week, but it was right after a hard workout and it worked extremely well. And I'm like, okay, putting it all together, cross training, I was swimming, I was riding a lot. Like something there was working. Let me try to implement that to making that work now for me. 
because if it worked in the past, it, it should usually work in the future. How I felt, and that was a big one. How did I feel during? I felt really, really good. I never felt like I was bonking and really tired. And then I came to the conclusion that I'm a sprinter. I have, you know, the power gene. Did some DNA testing and I found that out. Um, long distance running isn't really right for me from a lot of evidence that I'm seeing. And a big piece of evidence that I saw was when I run more, I don't lose body fat and overall weight like some distance runners. That's like a proper red flag. And I was like, all right, you know, this this isn't all adding up. If if that happens when I do this, but that happens when people do that, then that's not right. So to help me explain that, here's exercise sports scientist and co-host of this video podcast, Mike Trees. Yeah, well, uh, gaining weight and training is a simple one. You do more running, your metabolism goes up. So when the metabolism goes up, you want to eat more. Uh, and so your appetite goes up. The trouble is we often don't run as far as we think we do. So people actually eat more. They take in more calories than they burn up running and they put on weight. Part four, here's what I did to solve the eating too much problem. Now the solution for my eating problem, I went straight to Jordan Kane, the dietitian. I'd be recommending in terms of waking up and eating um, before going to training, trying to have some form of even like, like the slower carb in that meal. You're going to burn carb, whether it comes from a carb, whether it comes from a fat source that turned, is turning into a carb, you're still are going to be burning like carbohydrates for energy, right? So like the body's basically going to be like either working hard to try and like translate like a fat or a protein into a carbohydrate to use it or it can just get some carbohydrates from the small amount of carbohydrates that you're going to be having in your diet. So like that's what I'd be recommending. Um, like try not to train faster unless you're like doing a really chill session like weights or like doing something that's really not going to be burning too much um post-workout try and get something in that's like within 60 minutes of your workout every workout and you're aiming for like getting at least 30 grams of protein in in at that meal and then mike put it best with what he thinks actually happened and solution to that right here so you still need to uh watch what you're eating when you're training if you want to keep the weight down unfortunately it's not a license to eat as much as you want. And again, while I did say this is about my anecdotal evidence around, you know, my whole weight loss, fat loss journey, let's talk some hard science and facts and physics. Most of you folks out there probably know about a calorie, but do you know exactly what it is? Calories are a way of keeping track of the body's energy budget. A healthy balance occurs when we put in about as much energy as we lose. If we consistently put more energy into our bodies than we burn, the excess will gradually be stored as fat in our cells and will gain weight. If we burn off more energy than we replenish, we'll lose weight. So we have to be able to measure the energy we consume and use, and we do so with a unit called the calorie. One calorie, the kind we measure in food, also called a large calorie, is defined as the amount of energy it would take to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. That was What is a Calorie by Emma Bryce for TED Education. So now that we know what calories are, that's fine and all, but our bodies are not perfectly optimized machines. We, we all know that humans, we do not operate in this one in, one out, perfect mathematical equations. What the calories that are burned on your smartwatch or Strava says might not be telling you the whole picture. So what about the calories that you burn after certain types of workout? You know, you're not going to burn as many calories after doing a short 10 minute easy walk than if you were to do 10 minutes lifting weights or 10 minutes of sprints or three hours of running at a moderate pace. And what about your metabolic rate? based on hormones, so your age, how fit you are, your sex, you know, all these different things, what you're actually eating. So the bioavailability of all the different foods, what you're eating at different times. So many questions and I look to answer them for myself. I looked at my previous journal entries again from when I lost body fat and body weight and when I gained muscle mass. So this is specific to eating, not just training. And I like that feeling and I wanted it back. I didn't want that bloating around my stomach. I was like, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. I want that, that fat around my chin. I really liked when I felt, you know, uh, I just felt fit and, and, and muscular. And I won't even say thin, but I felt like I can cut through the air, if that makes sense. And the problem and the duality of it all is that I love the slow carb diet. And I also love a little bit of intermittent fasting that doesn't work with running and higher mileage running. I know you can do it, but is it the best thing to do? Is it the best thing for performance gains? Feel free to disagree with me in the comments below, or if you listen to the podcast, hit me up on socials, Instagram, TikTok, uh, email me, talk at delaycreates.com, because I know this is a 
contentious topic where it's like, no, 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 I can do low carb and you know, I can still run my best times. I'm not saying you can't, it doesn't work for me. A lot of science out there says it doesn't work. Uh, overall in the long term, it's probably not the healthiest thing to do. I found the best thing to do. And the solution to this whole eating when I'm running a lot is to approach it with a seasonal angle in the off season. I do less carbs because I'm not doing as much overall load, which is volume and intensity. And I can eat more good fats and protein and even intermittent fast. And again, the slow carb diet is great for this. And if I've gained weight, which happens during my race specific block of four to six weeks, when I'm tuning it up, I'm running a lot, a lot of mileage, a lot of volume, a lot of intensity, a lot of overall load, I will be fine with the weight gain. Please note that gaining a little bit of weight during this race specific phase is absolutely normal for most people. I give myself some leeway and some grace. Um, just you know, know that I'll lose that basically in the off season, anywhere from two to eight week off season, where I then will go back to the slow carb diet paired with intermittent fasting, and I'll lose that body fat and, and that weight that I've gained. The reason why you end up gaining the weight is because you need to be in a calorie surplus for recovery. So you want that fat around your organs to make sure that you recover well. Once you, like, like I said, if you start getting into that nine, eight, seven, six percent body fat range, which is really hard to get to in general, it's not easy to get into. Um, I know a lot of pro runners around seven, eight percent anyway, but when you get there, you're also balancing, not recovering well. And again, I give myself that leeway, that grace to gain the weight because I'm not pro and I just like doing this and I want to make sure that I don't get sick because that's what happens when you have low body fat. Also, you're susceptible to all types of sicknesses, um, overtraining syndrome, all these other things that I can talk about in depth in a whole other podcast. So can you really outrun a bad diet? So I found this tidbit of information about outrunning a bad diet. We're going to get back to that, how you can, how you can't. I've tried to give you a bunch of tools and tactics that I've used that have helped. Feel free to use your own. But this is really interesting. So it says, While runners do tend to be much healthier than the general population, with lower rates of diabetes and heart disease, that's largely due to a healthy diet rather than running regularly, says Sarah Mahoney, PhD. Chair of the Department of Exercise Science at Bellarmine University. In general, because runners run, they take care of their bodies by also eating well and resting. But not all of them, some of them, and we all know one, subsist on donuts and burgers. In the short term, running can mitigate the negative health effects of that lifestyle. But over decades, exercise loses its protective abilities. Daniel Kunitz for Runner's World on why you can't outrun a bad diet. Basically, you, you, you can't outrun a bad diet in the long term. You can't outrun in the short term. So let's find a long-term solution to it all. The best run eating ratio is also going to take you some trial and error like it did me. And I ended up eating too much. I ended up eating too little. So you got to find that middle ground. For some, it's running a lot and eating a moderate amount. And that carbohydrate ratio can change depending on so many different factors, how long you ran, et cetera, uh, genetics, all these other things. For others like me, it's running just enough. So for me, I like to run between 60 and 70 kilometers or 40 to 50 mile weeks and making sure that I do a lot of sprinting and a lot of strength work in there to make sure that I, I get out all that training load, but not on the distance approach. So I don't go out and smash easy, uh, easy miles out there because that actually doesn't work for me. And I end up eating a lot. Whereas if I do the short, hard stuff, I end up not eating too much. And that transfers over to most distance running up until probably about the half marathon. If I get into the marathon, which I don't train a lot for, sorry, I cannot get away with eating little and running a little bit. You have to train actually a lot for that. So unless you're actually extremely overweight and you start running, it's going to be really hard for you to lose weight. And the more experienced you are, the one, five, 10, 20 year long runners, it's going to be really hard for you to go, oh, I'm going to run to lose weight. And especially when you're in the race block. So make sure that you are in that calorie surplus. This isn't a hard and steady rule for everyone, but it, it helps me kind of give me guidelines. And I know a lot of people specifically as you get older into your mid thirties and late forties, your metabolism slows down. So you have to change up your eating. Eating clean, which the slow carb diet promotes is a better way of doing things than eating dirty. And again, you feel amazing. So clean eating is eating, you know, vegetables and good fats and proteins, omega threes, et cetera. Uh, dirty eating is the fries, chips, burgers. So it's the bad fats. It's a uh, the high carb, high fat diet, omega sixes, which aren't great, saturated fats, et cetera. Too much of it. A little bit's fine every now and then. Cheat days are fine. I like to use different eating styles and create a seasonal approach to it all. Like I said before, 
uh, which looks like cycling things from a monthly, weekly, daily, and even hourly type of approach. So it's like, all right, if I train really hard or I'm about to, I then will carb up um, during the season, during the VO2 max speed build block, even in the off season. If I know I'm going to do a two hour ride or a you know hour and a half run in the off season, I'm going to make sure I have a lot of carbs and maybe schedule my cheat day around that. That's actually a really good strategy. I'll try to do a episode um, around the slow carb diet and what I do around running in particular. So while the slow carb diet is great for four to eight week fat loss, if done right, hundred percent, you can also cycle it in for maintenance and just maintaining, uh, the correct fat around your, your racing schedule. Find out more about the slow carb diet by clicking the link below, um, in the description show notes if you're listening or go to theslowcarbcycle.com and get some free recipe ideas which i've put together you never know it might help you in the off season with your recovery in those off weeks or if you're injured and to help you find the right balance and amount of running and eating to help you feel and perform your best time time is a resource no one can make more of so we appreciate you taking precious time out of your day to listen this far our goal is to show the world how to live better through running cycling and triathlon the episode and many others have a transcription go to the show notes description to find out more this was produced in sydney australia and i'd like to acknowledge the gadigal of the eora nation who are the traditional custodians of this land. I pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and future. I recognize their continuing connection to the land, waters, and culture. These lands were stolen and sovereignty was never ceded. If you like this episode, again, we'd highly appreciate it if you go on whatever app you listen to and make sure to follow d Creates Podcast. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Acast, and a bunch of others. And if you're feeling real loose, a rating, review, or share of this episode to anyone you know that would be into something like this would be amazing. The more people that hear about us, the doper stuff we can do to then help other people. And if that virtuous cycle continues forever, we would always be grateful to you. If you have any questions, concerns, suggestions for the episode, or hell, you want to be on the show, hit us up. The best way is to email talk, T-A-L-K, at dlakecreates.com. We're also on the socials, mainly Instagram. You can hit up Mike Trees at the letters R-U-N dot N-R-G. Or you can hit me up on Instagram at dlakecreates or just wherever you can find us is fine. Don't worry if you didn't get all that. There's a link in the show notes description. Thank you again so much for listening. Peace.